presented by Queen Mary University, uh, Queen Mary uh, Law School, uh, University of London. Today we have with us uh, Petrova Lewis, who is the marketing manager for the uh, Queen Mary School of Law. Uh, so she will take us through the admissions process, the application process, and uh, what Queen Mary University School of Law looks for in terms of a prospective uh, uh, LLM applicant from around the world. So uh, thank you very much for joining us, uh, Petrova, and uh, I will pass on the presentation to you. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us uh, here today. That's perfectly fine. You can go ahead, Petrova. Thank you so much. Thank you for your patience. Um, as I've been introduced, my name is Petrova Lewis. I am the marketing manager at um, the School of Law at Queen Mary University, based in London. Um, and I'm going to take you through a short presentation and I would welcome any questions that you have further down the line. Right. So I'm just going to... Okay. I just want to go a little bit about the university. Um, our law school is over 50 years old. So in terms of um, universities, that's still quite young, but overall Queen Mary University is well over 100 years. Um, we are ranked ninth in England for our research, in particular for our law academic research. We are ranked third in London for law schools and fifth in the UK for law schools. To put that in perspective, um, in terms of the UK, we sit underneath the likes of Oxford and Cambridge, which most people would have heard of. We're also deemed one of the top law schools worldwide by a QS World School Rankings, 35th. Um, so that kind of, rankings can go slightly up, slightly down from year to year, depending on many, many factors. Um, but overall, Queen Mary is consistently ranked highly for our law school. Um, also, I can, um, I'm proud to say that we are a member of the Russell Group in the UK. Now, the Russell Group is a group of universities. Out of all the hundreds of universities, there are a small number of us, probably between um, 20 to 30, just under 30 universities, that are deemed as um, research excellence. So if you think about the Ivy League universities in the US, the Russell Group is the equivalent in the UK. Also, we are known as one of the top international universities worldwide. What that means in practice is that at our university, we have students from all over the world. So not only do we have students from all over the world, but we're also ranked very highly for law. I'd just like to point out that Queen Mary is part of another group called the University of London. This is an internationally renowned group of universities which includes um, the Royal Veterinarian College, um, the University of Oriental and African Studies. Um, we are 17 colleges and 10 institutes that share resources um, in London. So we have shared accommodation, shared libraries, career centres, sports facilities, and um, a student union. So practically it means that we are part of a collaborative of universities to ensure that our students have access to the most resources and facilities in particular in London. So that's just a little bit of an overview and a background of the School of Law and Queen Mary and how we sit um, with other universities in the UK. Um, just want to break down our law school because um, hopefully you're interested in studying law. Now you may be interested in studying in London, you may not be. But with Queen Mary, we have two distinct law schools. We have one that is called CCLS, and this is the most popular one with our Indian applicants. CCLS is our Centre for Commercial Law Studies. 
Um, we are located in central London in the legal district which has many of our courts and judicial organizations based locally. Um, we also have another department of law where we teach our undergraduates but also we teach criminal law, immigration law and many other aspects of law that are non-commercial and this is based in our major site in East London which is part of all of our other colleges which will include our engineering, our geography and all of our other schools and this is based in East of London. So our campus is contained within London but depending on what law subject you would want to study we have a campus based in central London or we have our campus based just 15 minutes away in East London. Um, our university has for our law school we have um, over 800 LLM students and overall maybe about over a thousand postgraduate students overall. So they may be doing MSCs, um, PhDs um, and other forms of qualification. We have students from studying law here from over 105 different jurisdictions and we've probably trained over 10,000 lawyers um, since um, the commercial law school was established 50 years ago. Um, so I'll just kind of move on. I've mentioned about our department of law we, where we teach students um, about immigration, criminal, environmental law and a number of non-commercial law subjects. Our Holborn campus, CCLS, um, we will teach many commercial law subjects. I will talk a little bit more about the subjects as we move further into the presentation. But just to note, other than our campus in central London and east London, Queen Mary teaches law on campuses in Paris, in Greece, and we also have a joint international commercial law program that we teach in London and partner in Singapore as well, um, which has been quite popular um, in terms of applicants. These are just some pictures, as you can see, um, we have our Holborn campus there, just to give you a visual of what it actually looks like, and then we have the East London campus. The East London campus is our main campus for the whole of Queen Mary University, and we are a self-contained campus, which means we have student accommodation, we have libraries, we have banks, we have um, food halls, we have um, graduate study centres, everything is contained within our East London campus for all of our students and we are one of the main universities that actually has a self-contained accommodation campus in central London. So this means that you can stay and live on campus and you can study on campus or you can stay and live on campus but take a short a metro ride into central London to study commercial law. As I mentioned, we have um, programs and locations in, in France. We have a program in Paris as well, which is very interesting because students can actually study a variety, not a full list, of different LLM programs in Paris. These will include banking, international business, energy, international dispute resolution, and intellectual property. Now, our Paris location is a smaller cohort of students compared to London, but it is a very international base. We have students from India there. We have students from Canada, America, all parts of Europe, um, and the UK. So it's a very diverse campus. Um, we have two start dates, so students can actually start an LLM in Paris in January or in September. So if people miss a deadline in September, but they still want to start quite soon, you can actually join a program in January and start an LLM at our campus in France. We have scholarships available for people that want to study in France. Um, and all of the LLM programs in Paris are taught in English 
and they are also taught by the Q Queen Mary academics and professionals. The Queen Mary academics will travel into Paris on a train from, the, from London and they will teach you. And students will get a Queen Mary qualification LLM. So your qualification is the same as those that will be studied in London. There is no difference. You'll be taught in English, but you will be taught in intensive blocks. So academics will come and they will teach a module over a course of four or five days, a week or two weeks, and then they will travel back to the UK. What this means is that in Paris, you will have more time um, to do reading, you will have time if you want to work, you will have a different type of experience with studying because it's taught in intensive blocks. But it is the same duration, the full-time program there is um, one year and the part-time is two years. Um, at Queen Mary, though, we don't just do LLM law programs, we also do MSCs, we do MA programs, we do postgraduate diplomas, we also do distance learning, we do specialist IT, IP, sorry not IT, IP, intellectual property programs, we have joint programs with our finance and economics department which are taught with our finance and acad economics academics as well as our law academics. We have international programs that we deliver outside. I mentioned Singapore, Paris, and also shipping, which we teach in Greece and in the UK. So the, the portfolio and the options that you have at Queen Mary is very vast. And um, we are growing in the different types of qualifications and the different legal subject areas that we are teaching. This is just a very long list of most of the programs that we teach as postgraduate programs at Queen Mary. I'm not going to talk through them all. Um, you can have a re review those or you can go online, but we have a vast number. Now, what I want to indicate about what Queen Mary is that our LLM programs are very specialized. So you can either do an LLM in law and have a very general LLM in law qualification, or you can have a specialist qualification. For instance, you can acquire an LLM in commercial and corporate law, or you can do an LLM in tax law, or you could do an LLM in international dispute resolution. So there are different types of LLMs that we offer, and the reason we do this is because we have um, a huge number of specialist academics. We have research institutes in many of these areas and we're able to teach them um, and also offer these as separate and specialist qualifications. Um, this is just a graph to show you what seems to be quite popular with Indian students. Uh, in terms of their choice of LLM programs. Commercial and corporate law is by far one of the most popular ones, as well as intellectual property. Um, we have comparative and international dispute resolution, that one's quite popular as well, and international business. So, I mean, we, we, we take students on all of our programs, but these are the ones that seem to be the most popular with our students that come from India. Um, also, just to reassure you that our cohort of Indian students are increasing. We are very popular in the market. Um, we, in 2000, between 2015 and 2016, we grew by over 16% of students from India for our postgraduate law program. So we are very popular um, and there is a strong um, body of Indian students here as well as other nationalities. We have a growing demand from Indian students for our dual LLM in commercial law, which is a partnership LLM that we deliver with Singapore Management University. So students gain a dual LLM, one from Singapore and one from London in 15 months. So this one's quite popular because it's a mix between UK international law as well as Southeast Asian law. 
And also you can see it's from students. We 55% of our students were female from India and 45 were male. Just some interesting information. Um, I mentioned about the dual LLM. This is a new program. Um, we have students on this program currently. Um, it's one single program, but it's split into two parts. Um, and it's based in two international locations. Students are awarded two LLMs, one from each institution. So you'll receive one LLM in commercial law from Queen Mary and one from Singapore Management. This is a 15-month intensive program. You will study six months and live in Singapore for six months with Singapore Management University. And then you will study and live in London for six to eight months um, with Queen Mary and you'll hand a dissertation in to Queen Mary. So the program starts usually in the summer and it finishes September the following year. So I just wanted to highlight that program because it's a very exciting program and it's quite new. But generally, um, we have over 29 different LLM programs. Um, we have over 200 modules for students to select from. So this is quite popular because it means that students have a lot of variety um, that they can choose for their electives. Um, we offer scholarships. Um, for this year, most of the scholarship deadlines have passed, but the scholarship deadlines for Paris are still open. So if anyone would like to join a Paris program for September or for January 2018, I would advise you to look on the website um, and, and look at the deadlines for the scholarship. Um, just uh, Petrova, can I uh, interrupt you for a, a second over here because there has been a couple of questions that has come in. Can I interrupt you for a, a, a minute? Uh, of course you can. Uh, so uh, there is a person from uh, uh, from Nigeria. You, it's clear. It's clear. It's clear. Okay, I can hear you now. Sorry, we were off audio for about a minute. So I, you said you had a student from Nigeria with a question. That's correct. Who who had asked a question? Who had just asked a question? I will uh, type it into the chat box. And uh, the question is, uh, I just type it over there. So this is the question that has been asked. Okay, sorry, let me just have a look. Um, no, you don't need to be proficient in French. The program is taught in English by our academics from the UK, and it is an English qualification. So this, the LLM in Paris, you don't have to speak French at all. Um, the duration is the same. It's a it's a one year program for full time. So you would study for one year. But like I said, the program is all in intensive blocks. So you, your module might be taught over a very short period of time, but you would have to do all the reading beforehand. I hope that answers. Yes, there is an LLM in criminal justice that we deliver. That is taught in our London campus in East London, the main campus that I mentioned and showed you earlier. So we have a criminal justice LLM program that's very popular. Thank Anyone? you, Petrova. Uh, that, that's all with the questions for the time being. Uh, I, you can continue with the presentation. And if there are further questions, please uh, type it out. And uh, as soon as uh, Petrova is done with the presentation, we can ask her. Thank you, Petra. Well, you can go. That's fine. Happy to answer questions. Um, I just wanted to say about the modules because this is very important and this is what makes Queen Mary distinctive. We have over 200 modules and up to 29 LLM programs. That is the biggest in the UK. You're not going to find another university that will offer you that variety. Also, with the modules, you can say if you wanted to do an LLM in criminal justice, you can pick some modules from other specialist areas. So you could mix criminal justice and you can pick modules from tax law. You can pick, you can do an LLM in intellectual property, but you can also pick some modules from arbitration. 
So the thing is, you would get an intellectual property LLM, but you would have studied and had the opportunity to have arbitration module. So you can do a variety of mix and match with your LLM programs. You're limited to 45 credits to do that. But that is an option for you, which is um, very much a big um, plus at Queen Mary. So I'm just going to um, continue. Let's click on. So as I mentioned about the modules, so how our LLMs are structured, um, you will have to take six 22 and a half credit modules. Some of our modules are 45 credits, so that means you would take less modules. Um, and I mentioned you can pick your modules from your specialist area, but you also have the option to pick up to 45 credits from any other area. So you can be studying tax, but you can also study environmental. It's really down to you. Um, if you pick 22 and a half credits modules, you can pick two from another specialism, or you can pick one 45 credit. But at the end of the program, you need to have acquired 135 credits made up from these different modules. You will, at Queen Mary, you are required to do a dissertation. So this is compulsory, and this will complete your requirements for your LLM. The dissertation is 45 credits, you'll be given a supervisor and you'll be given lessons in critical thinking to help you to compile this and to prepare your dissertation. The entry requirements, um, oh I can't see it, for English, in terms of English, so if you have been taught in your undergraduate program in English and you were examined in English, then within under um, a, a limited period of time, you do not need to take the IELTS. You can apply directly. If you have been taught in another language or you're, you was taught in English some time ago, then you will have to submit an IELTS with your application or you can take it and submit it at a later date before you join the program. Now at Queen Mary our English requirements for you to get an entry is a seven and a minimum of seven in writing. If you fall below this then we have pre-sessional programs which are basically like a summer English school that we have that runs before the start of term. So depending on your grades will depend on which pre-sessional you will have to take. So for instance, if you acquired an IELTS of six with 5.5 in, in, in speaking, listening, writing, then you would have to take a 13-week pre-sessional. If you get 6.5 overall with different, the different scores, you would have to take a nine week and furthermore, furthermore, five week, etc. in sessional program, English program. But if you have been taught in English and examined in English, um, you need to require a letter from your school, from the admissions, the academic admissions department or your school office to confirm that and submit that with your application and then the admissions team at Queen Mary will review that. As I've mentioned about the pre-sessional, if you do need to take it because you do not meet the IELTS qualifications, we have a five-week program, a nine-week program, and a 13-week program. These are held at Queen Mary's main campus. These are our pre-sessional programs, and we have quite a high pass rate. So if that's any, um, um, yeah, to give you a bit of confidence. I'm not going to talk too much about the pre-sessional, but this talk, um, this page talks a bit about how much, how the lessons work. Um, you do have to do quite a lot of studying if you need to take it so that your English is up to speed for when you start the program. Um, these are the costs involved for the pre-sessional. Um, a five-week program for this, for this year, for this academic starting for um, this summer, it ranges from £2,150 
going all the way up to 4,750. So there is a cost involved with the pre-sessional English classes. There are deadlines as well um, for the application and you have to attend the whole full session. You will be examined at the end and if you pass the examination, then you can progress onto your uh, LLM, your postgraduate program. But again, this is only for people that do not meet the English requirements and they fall short in their IELTS, the test scores. We have an in-sessional program which helps people to prepare for their dissertations. Um, and this is a free class and it runs alongside your LLM program. Um, it helps you with writing your legal text, um, your understanding of the English language in the context of law and developing and preparing your brief uh, for your, your dissertation. So this is a free program and I highly recommend students to attend, especially international students. The entry requirements for the LLM programs at Queen Mary we require a 2-1 UK undergraduate degree or alternatively you would have had to study a five-year LLB in um, your home country and that would be the um, two-year BA and then we would have further three-year LLB to attain the full five-year LLB. Your university should be listed on the Bar Council of India um, and we will look for a grade between 55 to 65 percent depending on your university and how our admissions will rank it. Hopefully that's quite clear so if you're coming from India you need to have your five-year LLB and you would have to have a grade between 55 and 65 percent. Again it depends on which university that you have attended as to the, where you sit in the percentage mark, which our admissions department will advise on. We have scholarships. I mentioned earlier, unfortunately, for this year, the students wanted to start in September 2017. Most of those scholarship deadlines are gone. If you want to study in Paris, then we have some scholarships available for our Paris program. But if you're thinking of coming um, to Queen Mary for 2018, or it's just something that you want to consider, then we do have a variety of scholarships that pay your tuition fee, full, outstanding, or partial for 50%. Um, and so those deadlines are quite early. They're usually about February, but you also have to have an offer to study at the university. So basically, you would have to apply for your program that you're interested in. The university give you an offer whether it's conditional or unconditional, and then you can apply for the scholarship. So we only allow people to apply who've actually applied for the program and we said you can come. So um, whether there is a condition on that or not, you can still apply. Um, as I mentioned for Paris, um, the scholarships are still open. We have one for, for, for tuition fee for September. 2017, we have one for partial tuition fee for September 2017, and we have one for partial um, tuition fee for January 2018. But you're limited in which programs at Paris, we only have banking, um, energy, intellectual property, comparative, dispute resolution, and international business. But that's just really to highlight. Scholarships, you fill in an application form, you submit a 1,000 word statement, you need a transcript of your qualifications, and a CV um, and a reference letter to apply for our scholarships. Our scholarships are awarded based on academic merit, so really we're looking for the top students when the, you're applying for um, a scholarship. So if you're just if you scraped by to meet our academic requirements, um, you're going to be not not in not a strong position. So we're really looking for those who are at the top. Now if you haven't got your English requirements, that does not affect whether you can apply for scholarship. So we're talking about academic only. I just wanted to mention about the, um, the institutes and the research centres that we have at the university. For law, we have many. Um, we have 
are academics that are actively doing many forms of research in vast areas of the legal um, sort of landscape. With that, they are advising governments, they regularly advise legal firms and global international businesses in different areas. With our computing and communications institute, they are working with Microsoft. Uh, we have an energy and natural resources institute. They are advising and working with government. So we have, um, especially our finance and banking as well. So we have, we have credible academics that are proactively doing research. Um, and that research and their learning and understanding themselves, they are bringing into the classroom. Um, just going to skip past this, this is another um, slide about our Intellectual Property Research Institute that we have. Um, I just want to briefly touch on careers and employability. Um, so we have a specialist careers team at Queen Mary for postgraduate law students only. They set up careers there, they can help you with your CV, your application, um, what um, an international law firm would be looking for an applicant, and you can book one-to-one -one sessions and they are more than happy to help you. Um, we've also got a student mentor um, program, so this is a program where we have professional legal, um, yeah, legal professionals who are actually in practice, they will mentor our postgraduate law students. Limited space because it's very popular, but it's a great opportunity for you to have a network and make a connection and have someone to help you um, in terms of giving you some guidance and advice in terms of your career. That is based in the UK though, so your mentor would be while you're on the programme. Um, I'm just gonna, we also look for internships, so we, internships and work experience is not a fundamental part of your program, so it's not integrated, but our career service regularly look for internships, opportunities, and we will post those out to students to apply for. So these can be international ones, these may be based in the UK, they can be with organisations we've had at the World Courts of Justice, the United Nations, um, shipping companies, a variety of um, internships. And some students are offered roles, um, permanent roles, um, for when they finish their programmes. So that's not unheard of and that is quite common. Um, outside of the classroom, I would advise students to get involved in some of our extra projects. Yes, you're here to study and get your qualification, but Queen Mary offer so much more. We have a postgraduate law society that you can get involved with. You can write articles for their journals. That looks really good on your CV. Uh, we have a European Law Student Society, which is open to all of our students because you're studying in the UK. They have a network of over 10,000 members across the whole of Europe. Um, and they also help with finding work placements and internships for their members. Um, and we have uh, lawyers without borders for those that want to do more pro bono, voluntary work with the disadvantaged. We also have a few legal project where law students will advise entrepreneurs and startup companies around any legal issues that they have. This is a project that we have based at the commercial law school and you would be supervised by a professional lawyer that will come in to check your work and advice that you'd be giving to your client. So this is a paid for work, um, but it is very good work experience and a fantastic project that we have based here at Queen Mary. So I'd just like to finish so that I give you some time to answer questions, but I would like to, you to take away that one, we are an innovative law school and that is demonstrated by the variety of LLM programs that we offer. We are very diverse. We have over 105 students. You can be in class with someone from Switzerland, from um, Trinidad and Tobago, from Canada, from Norway. It really is. And you're going to be able to acquire learning from them and network with them from basically legal professionals from different jurisdictions. Many of our students come from practice or are practicing lawyers. Um, so it's a real mix and diverse. 
and we have a global reputation. Queen Mary is has a reputation, and that's led by our research and our institutes, but also our alumni that are out. I was recently in an event in New York, and and I was approached by somebody who was actually one of our alumni. So you literally just bump into these people all over the world, and we are recognised corporately. Um, and within the legal profession and respect it. So those are a couple of things I want you to go away with um, and please feel free to ask me any questions. We have about 20 minutes, so I'll be online. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you very much, Petrova. There are uh, quite a lot of questions that has been coming in. So I will, uh, you know, I will, I, I will ask uh, one by one. Uh, so there has been a question from uh, Rishi and Jeevesh. Uh, both of them has, uh, have asked almost similar question and that is with regard to the scholarship that you were mentioning about. Uh, so uh, you did mention that the, uh, the, the scholarship application is closed for the, for the London campus. Is that correct? And only the uh, Paris campus is available. Is that right? And most of the deadlines for the for London are now closed um, because people are made aware whether they've been successful in the summer so that they know that they're starting in September with with or without a scholarship. So yes, the London ones unfortunately there is there isn't really any funding based on Queen Mary. So, so if a person wants to start his uh, LLM in the uh, fall this year, that's in 2017 September, then he uh, will have very limited chance for a scholarship. Is that uh, what? Is that what uh, we can basically, uh, basically, they would have to source funding from third parties externally, um, other scholarship opportunities outside of the university, but. For an international student that wants to come this September, it's very limited. We have open uh, scholarships available for our Paris campus, um, but the U London one, the application now is closed because it's quite late um, in the, the recruitment cycle. But uh, uh, however, they can still apply for uh, a scholarship on the, for the 2018 application, is that correct? Uh, yes, but that scholarship application won't open until October this year. So if they are, what they could, what in theory you could do is you could apply for a program um, for 2017. If you want to defer it, if you're given an offer and you don't haven't got the finances to come in 2017, you can contact admissions. You can defer it to start in 2018, and then when the scholarship um, applications open around usually around about October then they have their offer already that they can apply straight away or alternatively they can just apply for 2018 when we open applications for 2018 which is usually end of September of this year and then once they are given their offer then they can apply for scholarship for 2018 when the scholarship applications open so hopefully that makes sense uh, so, so uh, there is another question from Siddharth Singh. Now Siddharth asked uh, a very interesting question uh, in the sense that, uh, uh, you know, there might be certain people who might not uh, get the adequate mark, but they are still uh, nevertheless very knowledgeable about the law and they are uh, very motivated enough to uh, to do an LLM program. In which case, how do you uh, determine like who is the right person for uh, for the program. Uh, is marks the only way to determine that or is there any other criteria as well? Um, we do look at work experience. So for instance, sorry, I'm just quickly flipping through. Um, if you have, we would look at if you have any other legal qualifications. So if you have legal qualifications from like a bar school, um, we will take that into consideration and if you have significant work experience, so you're a practicing lawyer for maybe five years in, in, I don't know, in tax law and you can damage evidence that, then we will review your work experience. So if you do fall slightly below 
and you have significant work experience, we will, I would say, submit your application and we will look at it on a case by case. Um, so yeah, and then we'll look at any other legal qualifications that we recognise. So usually they're to do with the bar school. Okay, he also wants to know uh, that uh, any preliminary knowledge, say for example, uh, in a in a uh, in an LLM class, let's say for international business law or commercial law, are there any preliminary uh, 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 information or knowledge that is required uh, so that uh, you know when when they, when they go when they start in an LLM program, it, it is not very difficult for them to follow in the class, you know, for the students in a, a, to to follow what the professor is saying. So, is there any such uh, preliminary requirements? No, at Queen Mary there isn't, but this is why we ask for people to have an undergraduate in law. So you need to have, most, most of our programs require you to have an undergraduate in law, except for our MSc joint program with law and economics. So we would expect you to have that basic understanding of law from your undergraduate law degree, but if you're coming and you're studying international business or intellectual property, there is, we do not require you to have any um, prior knowledge to it because there are over 200 modules so you do not confirm your modules until you start the induction and so once you confirm your, your modules you won't know what you would need to know so we don't require you to have um, done any extensive reading or any extensive experience in those particular fields beforehand. I hope that answers your question, Siddharth. And there is a question, question from uh, uh, Adebola, uh, who is uh, from, again, uh, Lagos, Nigeria. So uh, he asked, like, uh, oh, he has an ex work experience of seven years in commercial law practice, corporate law and banking law, uh, and uh, working in one of the uh, premier law firms in uh, Nigeria. So uh, would he still be eligible to apply for a scholarship? Um, yes, you can apply for a scholarship for next year, not unless he wants to come to Paris, because the scholarship deadline is closed, and so they will not revise that, or it would be unfair to revise that for any applicant. But I have a colleague that will be travelling to Nigeria, um, literally quite, maybe in the next few weeks, and he will be in, um, he will be available if, uh, uh, our visitor would like to speak to him and we can find the information will be on our website and or I can forward the information to you to forward on to the, the, the gentleman. But yes, no I mean, yes, but I mean so you can talk to someone from Queen Mary directly and um, they will be in Lagos literally in a few few days time. But um, yes, we, we, we really embrace people that have um, work experience because that brings an added quality uh, and depth to the classes and to our cohort. But yes, he would have to apply for a scholarship, is it for the subsequent years or for our Paris program? Uh, there is another question from Rajesh uh, who has asked like, is it possible, and I think that, that this question is, is there in the minds of so many people, uh, he asked like, is it possible to get an internship during uh, the LLM studies? Um, well, I, I mentioned before we have a specialist career service that are constantly looking for internships um, and they um, forward those on to the students. So there will be no lack of internships for our, for our students to apply for. Now whether they secure them or not is dependent on the individual. Um, and when they take place, obviously they would not we would not be um, promoting for internships that take place during class time. So those internships may be over um, during holidays or um, with, when you're not actually studying. So those are the internships that we have or for when you've completed your program, um, you have the opportunity you know, to, to go and, and take up an internship. So as I mentioned before, the internships are not an integrated part of your program. So the program doesn't stop for like four weeks in the middle specifically for internships. No, it doesn't quite work like that.
there is also a, a question from Juhi. Uh, what she has asked is, you mentioned a, a, an aggregate of 55 to 60 percent. So is that like of, uh, for the final year of law school or all five years or three years uh, aggregate? That's the, uh, the, for the full five years, uh, up to 65 um, percent. But you can submit your predictive grade or your transcript. So if you haven't, if a student is an undergraduate and they haven't got their final grade, that's fine. All you need to do is send your transcript still in your application and then the admissions will send you a, um, a conditional offer based on you meeting X, Y grade. So do not be deterred. You do not have to have completed your program and have your final grade to apply. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, and th there are a couple of other uh, questions as well, and uh, uh, one of the question is the accommodation, uh, uh, the accommodation. So it it is with regard to the accommodation. So do uh, uh, the, the, does Queen Mary provide the accommodation uh, uh, in uh, somewhere near the campus, or is it up to the international students to look for the accommodation? So we provide um, student accommodation. We have over 2,000 rooms at our main campus in Mile End. Um, and some of those are apportioned to undergraduates and some are apportioned to um, postgraduates, mainly international students. So when students have an offer to study with us and they have accepted that offer, then they can apply for the accommodation. Now, we, it's limited. 2,000 sounds like a lot of bedrooms, but they do get snapped up very quickly. So um, if you do not, if a student does not secure because maybe they have applied too late, because it's very much a first come, first serve with the accommodation. Basically, those that apply early and accept early and apply as soon as the accommodation opens. Those are the students that will secure accommodation. So if you're unfortunate enough and you do not secure campus university accommodation, our accommodations team can advise you and they have a list of where you can secure private accommodation. So you're not just left totally kind of abandoned. Um, there is advice and guidance and, and, and we have people that are registered that rent out rooms and, and we can help you in terms of or guide you in terms of finding accommodation off of campus. Now the campus in central London um, that we don't really offer accommodation directly there but I did mention that we was part of the University of London and the University of London is a group of London universities and we have some shared accommodation with them. So potentially you can a student can tap into the shared accommodation and that you might be there with students from other universities that are part of the University of London. So that's also an alternative. Thank you. Thank you, Petrova. So uh, there's another question. Uh, is there like a, the, the dual LLM program with Singapore and UK? Uh, so uh, there's a question from Rajesh who wants to know a little bit more about this program. And uh, uh, will, the, uh, will the degree be awarded both by the uh, university in Singapore and Queen Mary together? Or uh, how does it work and uh, uh, what is the career opportunity post this dual uh, LLM program? That's what uh, Rajesh has asked. Um, you are awarded um, an LLM from Singapore, from SMU, Singapore Management University, and you are also awarded on successful completion of the program an, an LLM in commercial law from Queen Mary University. So you get actually two awards, two LLMs um, that are awarded by two distinct universities. Um, so you are, so what was the other half of the question, sorry? Uh, what is the scope of that, like you know, what happens if, uh, what, what is the career opportunities once this is over uh, with, the, with the Singapore and the UK one? Well, the career opportunities are, you know, what you make of them. 
when you study in Singapore, you will be studying legal, um, commercial law in relation to Southeast Asia to do with trade in that particular part of the world. And when you study in the UK, you'll be able to study um, some of our specialists, not all, but some of our specialist LLM um, modules. So you will have that diversity of that solid international UK law qualification, but also with the slant of Southeast Asia modules. So you can use that whether if you want to work in India with a company that is doing trade, or, or doing law with um, Southeast Asia, or you can use it if you want to go and work in Singapore or Southeast Asia, or in the UK, it's an international law degree, so kind of the world is your oyster. Now, no LLM program guarantees you a career because it, it's, a career is built up of many factors um, other than just your, your straightforward qualification, but this qualification gives you Southeast Asian law modules as well as taught in Southeast Asia by a Southeast Asian University and UK International taught at Queen Mary. Okay, thank you Petro. Well, I, I think that is it about with the questions. Uh, so there is another question in terms of how, how to, after this LLM program, whether we can get uh, uh, admitted to the UK bar. Okay, I think what he means is like after this LLM program, is there any option for uh, getting uh, admitted to the to the uh, you know this uh, the solicitors uh, uh, account, uh, to become a solicitor or to become a barrister? No, this um, to become a solicitor or to become a barrister in the UK is a very um, is a different education route. Um, to qualify as a solicitor in the UK, you have to take another qualification. And to qualify as a barrister in the UK, you have to take another qualification. Now, the solicitor one and the barrister one, we do not offer at Queen Mary University. And the solicitor one is called the LPC, and the barrister one is called the BPTC. So, yeah, bar practitioners training certificate. So these are two very distinct qualifications. Now, an LLM will not qualify you to be, it doesn't make you a barrister or you cannot be admitted to the bar. You can only be admitted to the bar once you've successfully completed and done, uh, pick, done the bar, the BPTC qualification and any of our requirements in terms of pupillage. With the, the solicitor program, again, you have to take the LPC, which is a one-year solicitor pro, um, um, practitioner certificate, and um, then you are qualified as a solicitor in the UK. So just to be clear that the LLM program is not a solicitor program, it is not a barrister program. Those are separate qualifications that you have to take within the UK. Um, the LLMs give you the specialist legal knowledge around a particular legal landscape. Do I need to be registered with the bar to practice in a commercial law firm? Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a question which has been asked by uh, Juhi who wants to know whether uh, she needs to register with the bar council. Uh, it's a bar, bar council equivalent uh, to, to be uh, practicing as a commercial lawyer. Okay, um, to, you, you're registered with the Bar Council when you are a barrister and when you have taken the Bar qualification. So as an LLM student, this will qualify you in a legal area in the UK. It doesn't make you a barrister. You can still work in a corporate company. A barrister, they go to high courts. Um, and they're able to, to work in that area. I'm not a career advisor, so I can only really touch on it. But you can obtain, there are vast different jobs within the legal profession, within corporate companies, and um, you do not need to be registered with the bar to be able to work for them. You are registered with the bar when you are a barrister within the UK, when you have passed the bar qualifications and all the requirements for the bar. So that's a very distinct and separate education qualification route for barristers. 
but to work in corporate law, you do not need to be a barrister um, and you do not need to be registered with the Bar Council. Uh, there is one final question, one more question which just came up. So in terms of applying, can they just go ahead with the application right now in terms of, uh, you know, for the application process for the uh, for the uh, for the LLM program, and is there anyone in India that they can reach out to? So there is a question that they had asked, like, is there anyone in India that they can reach out to? Okay, yes, you can apply online. Basically, you just go onto our website, you review our programs. We have different, sorry, um, different program pages. I don't know. I'm going to see whether I can find it on my computer. Whether you can see. So basically, this is our website. You want to apply for a course. You go on to a particular program that you're interested in, say, for instance, Comparative International Dispute Resolution. Here's all the information about the program, and then you just click on the Apply Now button. That will take you to a page where you upload your transcripts, you fill out your details, um, and that's how you apply for a program at Queen Mary University. So it's quite straightforward. Now you can reach out to someone. We have someone, we have um, two members of Queen Mary staff that are based in India, um, a lady called Jasprit Jasp and Mahinda. I can forward those details on to our colleague and, and I'm sure he'll be happy to forward those on or we can post those for you if you want to contact them directly. Uh, thank you very much and uh, is there is there any, if there is no further question, I think that uh, uh, we can we can conclude over here. Uh, so thank you very much for taking the time out Petrova to explain about the application process and uh, uh, th thank you so much for going over all the questions in details. So uh, if you would like to add anything, uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, no, that's it's been, it's been great. Um, we, uh, Queen Mary do proactively go to India um, and uh, uh, to speak with students. We have agents out there that can help you with the application process and help you with, and advise you about the visa process as well. Um, and like I said, we have um, Queen Mary staff that are based in India, so I'm more than happy to share those details. And for students from other places like Nigeria, we have um, somebody from the university that will be visiting quite soon. So, yes, and all the information, all the different programs, they're all on our website. Please just visit um, and, and, and if you have any questions, contact us at the university. Thank you very much. Thank you, Petrova. Thank you.